I'm Pam Selly. Um, I'm from Philadelphia-ish. I've been there a few years now. Um, and I do stuff. Um, I always like to put in my bio, I just make things on the internet. But um, especially in Philadelphia, I'm known for running around a bunch of various communities. I'm involved in the Ruby community and the Python community. Um, and I teach. And I've taught um, Ruby, Python, JavaScript, web development, Git. Um, and I usually do that in low cost, either free or low cost environments. Half the time, not getting paid, um, and sometimes getting paid a little bit. Um, so what I want to talk about today is some of the existing education programs that are in other communities that I think the JavaScript community really needs to learn from. Um, why particularly the JavaScript community has a very special problem that we need to use education as a solution, and how we can, um, how we have in Philadelphia, used education in our community. So who's been teaching? Um, so have any of you guys heard of some of these initiatives before? I hope, yeah, I hoped most of you, because they're really great things. Um, I've taught for a few of them. Um, but my favorite, personal favorite, biased, I love the Boston Python Workshop. Because the Boston Python Workshop is based in a user group. And they have these really great results from the particular way that they do things. The other ones actually, so Rails Girls, Rails Bridge, um, PyStar, uh, and actually the Boston Python Workshop also follows the two-day format, where you have one day where people get ready, the next day where there's a workshop, that kind of format. Um, but Boston Python Workshop is attached particularly to a user group. So that's what we do in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia Python user group. Um, and so Boston Python, when they started the workshop, they had zero representation of women. They increased it to 15%. Um, lots of alumni, insane growth. Um, and if you want to learn more about it, they did a great talk last year at PyCon um, about a lot of lessons learned and a lot more details about how exactly they did it. So why does JavaScript need to? So JavaScript is a special snowflake. Um, aw. <laughs> so JavaScript has the unique and totally awesome and problematic thing where anyone who does anything on the internet really should probably know JavaScript, or they try to or act like they do. Um, so it's number one language in the world. And so we have this unique kind of thing where we have all these people who have dabbled in a little bit of JavaScript, and they've picked up enough enough to do what they need to do, but they really don't have a deep understanding or even a shallow understanding of a lot of the fundamentals. So when we talk about teaching JavaScript to people, we have a unique thing that happens is if I'm teaching Python to a beginner, they, chances are pretty high that they will have zero programming experience if they're coming to an intro to Python workshop. If I'm teaching an intro to JavaScript uh, workshop, a lot of times I get much more people many more people who are already actually software engineers who just know that they don't know any JavaScript, but they've had to pretend like they do, um, or people who have just kind of fallen into it because you start writing HTML, you start writing CSS, and then at some point you, you, know, you want to have like a login modal, so you have to write JavaScript. So how we can do this is by putting education in our user groups. Um, and that's the lime and the coconut, if you all get that joke. Anyway. Um, so my top three reasons that you should bring education to your user group. Number one, bring in new faces. If we learn something from Boston Python, it's a ridiculous way to up your numbers. Um, just by hosting the workshop itself, you get a lot more than the people who join for the workshop. It's that kind of awesome network effect and the kind of you do good things and good things happen to you. Um, improve diversity. So by making things open and accessible and being the kind of place that beginners can go, you essentially make things better for everyone, which kind of has a natural diversity impact, where you invite more people who don't look like your standard user group, and then you get a user group that looks like more like the rest of the world, hopefully. And we want to make JavaScripters better, right? So since code is read a lot more than it's written, my kind of dream is that by educating all these JavaScripters to stop doing the things that I hate seeing when I read someone else's JavaScript, that one day I'll never have to read that again. Um, so we make JavaScript better by making JavaScripters better. And we started a kind of a grassroots initiative to generally raise code quality in general. So I feel like we're, like, generally is like in tech community, we're always interested in the bleeding edge of things, but I'm really passionate about stepping back and moving towards the lower level of things and helping everyone else get themselves up to more of an intermediate level. 
And there are also totally possibly selfish reasons that you should bring education to your user group. You can use it to attract sponsors. Um, goodwill brings goodwill. Um, we've noticed that when we do things like bring education to our user group, people start throwing money at us. We are not against that. So we happily use it to run more workshops or to bring speakers from out of town or other happy things like that. You can also run education programs outside your user group, such as for your interns. Um, I'm a big fan of intern indoctrination. Um, that never ever assume that your interns know something, uh, running intro workshops for them. Um, I have explained the box model countless times to people. Um, and onboarding, same thing for that. Don't assume things, be honest and sincere in what you're teaching. Learning lunchtime courses for people who are reskilling from another skill set, uh, that kind of thing. So you can bring education, this kind of education program doesn't have to be in your user group, so you can also do it in other contexts too. And teaching makes you better and stuff. Um, teaching challenges you. Um, I've been asked really interesting questions by people who didn't know that they were asking an unusual question, that kind of thing, like kind of like deep typing questions. Um, can I do this? Does this work? Um, what happens if I do that? Um, why does that work that way? Um, things like that that really kind of happen when you start teaching. Um, and also the side benefit of it, you talk in front of people and you're, you know, most people can use to stand to get better at that. Um, so how we did it in Philadelphia, and that was, this is the workshop we just did a few weeks ago. It was in a church. Isn't that cool? Um, so it's actually um, an SEO firm that uh, we did a church in Philly, and so they have the search church upstairs that they let um, us and other groups use for events sometimes. So we had our workshop in the sanctuary. So, so how are kind of how to do run a workshop? So running through these. So promote from within. So while, yes, it can bring in new members, remember that the other goal is to make everyone better. Um, we have a lot of members of our user group who identify as beginners or they identify as people who are retooling. And so making sure you invite them first and that they, you tell them that they're priority attendees because you, the reason is because you want them to get more out of your user group so that, say, they can understand more of the talks and they're more interesting to them because they're more relevant to them. Um, so promoting from within is a really key point. Advertise with your curriculum. Number one part of that is advertise. Um, I've never had a problem with selling out workshops of any kind, um, but I also have been told that I'm very good at getting the word out about things. Um, by putting out your curriculum and saying what you're going to cover, especially in JavaScript, so that people know that you aren't going to talk about Java, um, is generally a good idea. Um, so we advertise with our curriculum available. Um, at least the syllabus of sorts. Bring a friend strategy. Um, we really like this to help that kind of like spreading the network effect so that we say, hey, members of the user group, if you aren't interested in if, you know, we're doing this workshop thing and you're totally awesome at JavaScript, but I bet you know someone at work who totally isn't, you totally shouldn't say that to them, but you should totally invite them to this workshop. And you should say, I'll, you know, volunteer. So this is how you also get people who are the great JavaScripters in your user group already. You leverage them as mentors and coaches. My favorite ratio is one mentor or coach to five students. Um, using the word mentor or coach, um, you can also say teaching assistant. I kind of like coach because it uh, implies like kind of like going for the team kind of thing. Um, so I kind of call them coaches. Um, this is my friend, hold on, laser pointer? Yeah. This is my friend Kelly. He like blinks during every picture, it's really funny. And some of you all might know Valhead, who just moved to Philly. Um, but I really love mentors and coaches. You really can't run any workshop without them. They are so, so super important. Because they're the people, so if I'm talking up here and doing a lecture type thing, um, and if you guys went to, there was that, um, the Shopify guys doing their little, one of their micro talks with a teaching thing, they mentioned about how no one likes to raise their hand, which is pretty really true. And so that's why you really kind of have to lean on your coaches as being the people who are wandering around the room, who are being accessible to the people who are looking kind of confused. And then your coach says, hey, do you have any questions that I can help with? And it really works really well. Charge a little money or don't. So I love free workshops. I love free workshops. But the problem is if you give away something for free, a lot of times people just bail. And the problem with that, with offering a low-cost educational opportunity, that's kind of a 
it's kind of a rare thing, and it's a really important thing, and so it's an opportunity you want people to take advantage of. So we charge a little money just to add that kind of like little hurdle, so that's like, you have to give us $5 just so you prove that you are willing to give us $5, and then we'll just use it for food. Um, and the policy is very clear that if for any reason you don't have to tell, like when I'm organizing a workshop, you don't have to tell me any reason that you don't want to pay. You just have to email me and say, hey, Pam, I want to do the workshop, but I'm not giving you $5. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And then I'll sign them up. Um, so we personally, in the Philadelphia JavaScript developers group, we charge a little money just to provide that hurdle, but also provide a path so that if for whatever reason it's a hardship, it doesn't matter to me why, just providing a way for them to get into the workshop. Set clear expectations on all sides. Make sure your students know what they're getting into. Make sure they know they aren't going to a Java course. Um, and also that makes sure that you let people know if, if you do want to go into some more advanced topics, that you don't get people who are overwhelmed. So you make sure that they're pointed toward the more beginner side. And you also do this kind of expectations deal for your coaches. Um, so making sure, for one, that your coaches are skilled enough that they'll be able to answer student questions. Because um, I have had people um, in other workshops try and sneak into workshops by volunteering as a coach. And it's really not very good, because then they actually can't help, um, because they really should be a student. Um, it's great that they love our workshops so much that they want to like sneak in, but um, not really awesome for us on the organizer side. Um, but for the coaches, also setting clear expectations. Like um, I always do a little spiel about the rules of being a coach, like never touch someone else's computer without asking. Um, so you respect people's space, um, things like that. And just making sure that your coaches are on board with what's going to happen so that they understand what's expected of them. Numbers from this past workshop that we just ran. Um, so we had 30 students, six coaches, so we got that nice ratio. Every single one of the students surveyed said that they would come to another user group meeting. Awesome. Um, and we had 64 new members uh, join our meetup, um, our user group. Uh, so it was a 25% group increase in less than a month. And I really like this is the stuff that our students said about us. Uh, my favorite one is actually the difficulty level one that since, remember, JavaScript is a special snowflake. Um, there's plenty of places you can go and run through like Vero turtle equals cat on the internet in your console or whatever, but there's not a lot of places that'll really explain to you like this is what the concept of a variable means and this is why it matters and here's how the object literal is related to the DOM. Um, ability to talk to coaches is another favorite. That's why, one of the reasons why they're so important. Uh, lecture and hands-on. Um, hands-on is always really important. I always do try to talk. My maximum kind of talking is about 15 minutes. That's like the most I'll talk before I let people get on their computers and do stuff. Um, it could be just as like, just make something up and be like, I want you to make an array and fill it with animals. And then they'll do it. And they'll, you know, and you'll find out really quickly if they understand what an array is and how they populate it with, uh, with data. So. so you can do it, too. So how do you run a workshop, you people here who love education and want to bring it to your user group? So you can try it yourself, because I put the curriculum that we used in Philly online at JS for Everyone um, on my GitHub. And so it consists of, it's a reveal presentation like this one. Um, so it's actually, so if you know, you remember how a reveal presentation is like you can make like, the sections, so the vertical sections are split like that, and so they're components. So theoretically, um, when I do it, it's 30 minutes per component. Um, once you, in, like that's including interactive time, that's not just talking time. Um, so going over, these are the very, very basic JavaScript fundamentals that we go over. Big thing in fundamentals course, be really kind and sincere. Don't assume that anyone knows everything. The reason they're in your workshop is because they want you to explain it to them kindly and with sincerity. So go slowly, be kind, and honestly and sincerely explain things like what an object literal is. So some tips for you guys if you're interested in this. I, I promised a lot in my, in my talk, so I'm running through a lot. Um, so how I teach and coach, um, watch the room. Um, so like, for example, right now, this is late in the day, so this is really difficult, because a lot of you are looking at your computers. So if I were teaching this at the class, I would probably make you all do something. So, and also when you're teaching and coaching, listen more than you talk. It's definitely, obviously, important for a coach. But a lot of people, we get so excited that we want to talk a lot, but we really need to not, and let them tell us what's going on. 
Seriously, by listening more than you talk, you prevent a lot of confusion, and you help solve any confusions for the student a lot faster. So asking for clarification rather than doing some exposition is generally what you want to do. So give space, the thing about don't touch the keyboard, that's physical space. Um, also give kind of emotional space. So if someone, I've seen, like it's hard, and remember that these are adults, so like, the thing about teaching adults is like, they don't have to be there, and they can bail at any time, but theoretically they came because they want to be there, so your job is to kind of help them want to be there, if that makes sense. Um, so giving them emotional space, so like if they are getting frustrated, and like, I've seen people get like really upset, and don't say things like, you're doing fine. That seems like an awesome thing to say, not an awesome thing to say, because then their head goes, oh my god, I'm a terrible person and I'll never ever know JavaScript. Um, saying things like, well, tell me more about it. Um, have we looked at this part of it? Do you want to look at that part of it? Would that help? Like, be more like that and like, recognizing the problem rather than trying to sidestep the problem. And embrace your style. So uh, this is one of the tips that someone gave me about when I started teaching, is that if you want to do all your lectures with cat pictures, awesome. Um, kind of just embracing the way you want to talk, um, because when you teach especially, um, if you're comfortable, it helps the people in front of you be comfortable. Um, they can feel if you're nervous and if you just run, a, want to run away, then that might that make them feel that way too. But you can't do it wrong, or you will find out very quickly if you are, because they will leave. Um, that's not the nice way to say it, but that's true. Um, so I have... A, not always been the best teacher, and I've had people get really frustrated, and so then I figured it out, and then I figured out what I was doing wrong. Um, so that's just kind of a caution in case this sounds like a lot to do, but really like giving it a try and then you can figure it out um, is the way to go. So one of my favorite things that the Boston Python workshop says is they say when, when we're teaching a workshop, like, well, in Philly it's a, a PyStar workshop, but we use Boston Python curriculum, but we say, Today is not as important as tomorrow. Today is not as important as tomorrow. So the workshop is not as important as the day after and the day after that. Whatever you do when you're learning something doesn't matter if you don't use it. So one of the best things you can do is, that's why having these things in a user group is really great because you already have an organization to attach things onto. So the classic user group meeting with talks, um, we generally try to have a more, we usually, we do talk meetings every other month in Philly, and we have two talks. One talk's more of like a kind of intro talk, it might be an intro to a certain technology, and the other one's a little bit more advanced. That's kind of how we run it. Um, having lightning talks, we also combine our lightning talks with project nights. Um, project nights are what some people call hack nights. We call them project nights because they make them more accessible to everyone. A lot of people have, who are new to development especially, don't really understand the idea of a hacker. And like, they think of like, you know, the you know, black screen, Max breaking into the Department of Defense kind of thing. Um, they don't really get that you know, hackers are just people working on things. Um, so we do project night and lightning talks. For us, our lightning talks are five minutes. Some people do longer lightning talks. Lightning talks are a great way to get your new members to start talking to people quickly. Um, I've even had workshop attendees give a lightning talk at the next session because they just want to talk about a problem they solved using something cool that they learned, and it will be valuable to someone there. And no matter what, it's only five minutes. So it's a really accessible way for people to get started. And uh, book clubs are providing other ways for people to get in contact with each other, whatever works for your group. We lean on meetup.com a lot. It works for us. You use what works for you. So summary is put your education into your user group, because by doing that, hopefully we can make a better community in order to make a better JavaScript, making better JavaScripters, and bring the joy to the masses through education. Thank you. Um, <laughs>